The track had led, as I had expected, very gently downhill. I do not know how far I had walked when the ground rose a little under me and then dipped again. Further on the same thing happened again, but this time it was less marked. It was difficult to tell how far I could see ahead. I only know that when I saw the thing standing in the track in front of me, it was already too close for comfort. It was tall and dark and absolutely motionless. I stopped dead. I do not think I actually stepped back. I must have made some sort of noise because a figure detached itself from the standing thing and came out sideways looking at me. It was smallish and somehow luminous in the surrounding dark. When I got my wits back a bit, I could see it was human and almost certainly a woman. She had some sort of white coat on. I took a long breath and said, My goodness, you gave me a fright. And that concludes this week's reading of Sweet Valley High Twins by Caroline B. Cooney, I think. Join us next week. <laughs> For now, I'm afraid I must rush off. I have a short horror Saturday stream on Twitch. Oh, and you're already here. Welcome to Short Horror Saturdays with Purblind Gamer. I'm your host, Purblind Gamer. And you are, unless I'm very much mistaken, chat collectively. I hope you all are having a good weekend. I had a slightly busy week and then had a bunch of stuff I had to do today for money. But hey, I got it all done and that's what counts. I have even got it done well. I suppose that also counts. I certainly hope everybody enjoyed our little excursion into Ecstatica over uh, the last couple of Wednesdays. That was... I wouldn't say it was an excellent game. I wouldn't say it was one of the top ten games ever made, but it was certainly fun. And I wonder if I should highlight it and keep it on the chat on Twitch. Hey, Angela. Welcome in. Uh, we've all been there. Tried to turn up volume, turn up brightness, hit the wrong switch, reach for the zoom hotkey instead, press the reset hotkey, destroy the game when you're almost at the end. So I hear, never happened to me. But how are you doing? I hope you're having a good weekend. I was just speculating whether I should highlight my... Uh, playthroughs of Ecstatica and preserve them for eternity on Twitch as opposed to for two weeks. I don't know that there's any mechanism that prevents you from highlighting every stream you've ever done, thereby keeping them on Twitch, but I suspect that's considered gauche in the nicer circles. Unfortunately, I'm not in the nicer circles. I don't even know if I'm in the rude squares, come to that. But at least I archive almost all of my VODs on YouTube for... I don't know. Why do I? We'll just say posterity. Posterity is a good excuse for just about anything. Now today is a rather special episode of Short Horror Saturday. Because uh, I think I mentioned to you guys I'd been planning to do this double feature. And one of them was an FMV horror game called Project Slasher from 2008, which was released on DVD back when nobody was doing FMV. <laughs> oh yeah, my YouTube channel's uh, also Purblind Gamer, and I have a link to that, as well as my Twitter and my MySpace on my About page. <laughs> and you know, there have been a bunch more FMV games since, like, since 2014 or so, but for a while they were pretty dead. We had Fate by Numbers, which I will definitely play through at some point, and Project Slasher, and they were curios because they were so rare. So I finally got around to actually buying the Project Slasher DVD a couple of weeks ago, and oops, Amazon discontinued it. 
This is why you should not put things off for 12 years in the hopes that you will become rich and be able to fling money about like barley into the wind. So I looked up the name of the guy who made it and wrote an email to him and was like, um, hey, I've been meaning to buy your DVD and I see it's not on Amazon. Is it possible to buy a copy? And also, this is a cool piece of history. Have you thought of re-releasing it on Steam? And he wrote back to me and said, oh, thanks, I'm glad you liked the game. I, I could uh, send you a file and you could burn your own DVD or I could send you one, but... Also, I just released the whole thing for free online so anybody can play it. And I'm like, oh, damn. That's really nice of you. Because, like, it would have been really easy for him to throw it up on Steam for, you know, charge dollar, charge 50 cents, but... No, he just released it online for free. And I hope some of the people who uh, made interactive YouTube videos follow his lead, because a couple of years ago, YouTube changed how they do things and broke all those um, like interactive choose your adventure and almost uh, laser disc style shooting games on YouTube like the one that uh, Darkstone Entertainment did in 2010 and the Silver Nugget which I played which was basically coded in Flash and using YouTube to develop a Mad Dog McCree-esque experience but now it's unplayable and possibly lost, which is a damn shame. But Project Slasher is not, and so we can play it. Hell, you can play it yourself after stream, all for free. Yeah. I've imagined since I've read about this game and then forgot about it for years, um, several times since it was released, it, it won't live up to my expectations, but it'll be fun. I mean. Slasher, FMV game, gore, attractive female protagonist. These are all things that I can approve of. Also free. And then after this, we will play Terror Tracks, Track of the Vampire. Not the computer game FMV version, but the interactive audio CD, which I fortunately have a copy of. And which is now not available on the net. <laughs> But first things first, time to slash. Or not get slashed, I assume. There were other, there are several interactive uh, FMV things like this, but some of them never came to fruition. I remember seeing the sites for them on the horrifying search engine back when there was a thing. I think Chuckles Revenge actually got made, but wasn't very good. I think It's My Party and I'll Die If I Want To had one release like that, but I just got the VHS. Anyway, I'm rambling about nothing. Mm. Project Slasher, starring Amber Lake, who was, had some, some kind of a career. I think she was a, in a reality TV show around the time this was released. Boy, I'm excited. <laughs> And let me know if the volume is all right. She lives, she dies, you choose. Choose wisely. Hey. Yeah, that looks good. It's certainly a cold and damp start here in Pennsylvania. However, it's certainly better than yesterday. In the Reading area, you're looking at temperatures Two of about 31 degrees. However, men the wind chill wearing plastic masks after robbing. Eastern Pennsylvania, Reading, and Philadelphia. Wearing suits. Please ask to report developments. I say that for the weekend, because as we Best see, Buy to push new iPod Nano. Continue up until Friday. Helicopter crash. This is filmed in widescreen, isn't it? I just thought it would be an OA to like low budget.
really does feel like you're watching, you know, an 80s horror movie. Maybe a little more 90s than 80s. Not that I'm complaining. Did this mirror? Is this really well shot? It's only a cold and damp start yeah. here in Pennsylvania, however it's... You're not supposed to be in the full screen when you make the choice? Oh, there it is. I somehow didn't see it. Uh... They never do stop, but they did. <laughs> Two brothers. I don't think we won. Interesting. Look, when you're in full screen mode, the choices don't appear, but when you switch out of full screen, they do. I wonder if this will be like 
how much this will be branching and how much will be every choice is either leads to one death or one correct one. Seems like some of the choose your own adventure books <laughs> suffered from. Well, not quite that, you know, complete a dichotomy, but a good 75% of the choices, you know, were between life and death. Anyway. Barn. Excellent for disemboweling. Let's try the chainsaw. Hey, it worked for Leatherface. Learn from our mistakes. Hey, Erica Doggers. Doing all right, thanks. How are you? Welcome in. We're just playing some FMV horror fun. First century, baby. A stealthy approach. It's a hammer, I guess what she that's what she killed the second brother with. Oh 
nice. Got home from work not long ago. Ooh. Hmm. Hopefully you're off for the rest of the weekend. How many folders for darkness? And then did she kill them, I guess? That's the end. Okay. So, not especially long or in depth, but an interesting project, pretty well made. And I know in one interview from probably 2010, they said they were trying to expand it into something feature length. Which would have been cool if they could have. It had a branching narrative. I, yeah, I guess this was... Kind of seems more like a proof of concept. You know, like a, a within the woods for an evil dead. And it's a shame they didn't get to make a full length thing, but... Maybe they will someday. And there and there'll be another kind of more involved FMB effort since. So, and there's some some of those are like they're not full FMB. They're like use FMB actors against backgrounds or like within static shots. I mean, it, it would have been nice if we'd gotten a better sense of the characters. Because it looked like they were going to just a little bit, but... So that was Project Slasher, and... It was, it was interesting. I'm glad I finally played it, played it, and... I'm really glad they released it for free. Which was, you know, considerate of them. Yeah! Yeah, I know I have a, a cadaver. It's like, I guess since her story and a few other things, like, the last five years has been more of a resurgence, especially because Steam 
makes it easier to distribute and you know people have faster internet and bigger hard drives so yeah I hope they they do consider doing a bigger project <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and for the next for the next game and this is one I'm excited to play because I remember seeing one of the Terra Tracks audio CDs in a KB Toys when I was really young. Like, I don't know, maybe eight. And my family, which was behind the times, had finally gotten a CD player. And I'm like, oh, Dad, can I get this? This could actually work in our CD player, according to the label. He's like, no, it'll probably give you nightmares and probably really scary, which, to be fair, is entirely possible. Actually, that was Track of the Werewolf, and the one I've got my hands on is Terra Track's Track of the Vampire. Now, what's, what's interesting about these games is there were, I believe, both PC FMV game versions and audio CD versions of both these games uh, released simultaneously. And there were two later titles in the series that were audio CD exclusive, but Though they're really rare, maybe they release in limited quality quantities. Assuming they were officially released. And for a while, Wizards of the Coast had Terra Tracks, Track of the Vampire, and Track of the Werewolf, the audio versions, just on their website to play for free in real player. But those have been gone a good uh, ten years. So the only way to play it is if you happen to have an original audio CD. Which I do. Yeah, not bad for five dollars. I will go ahead and open this up and hope this is brand new factory sealed. It works. And you know, there's been more uh, attempts at audio gaming, like especially games for completely blind people in the intervening years. But it seems like it wasn't that common when this was released. Which I don't know. Probably mid nineties when it first came out. So yeah, you guys get to see the unboxing, even if it's more like an unjeweled casing. Track of the vampire. An interactive audio game. You play it in the dark where you're most alone. I could turn off the light, but I don't think I will. <laughs> yeah, audio CD games are they're pretty unusual, Abercadaggers. And I think most of the audio games were released more like starting in the year 2000 and just, you know, on PC. There've prob I mean, there probably been others. And I remember reading about an audio only game that was released like it came with a sound card at some point in the 90s but i can't remember the name of it i thought it was hunt the wumpus but that was something different and now i can't find it when i try and look it up maybe somewhere out there there's a master list of games that were released with sound cards because you can probably find things like that on the internet Dude, God, i'm scared i'm going to break it getting it out okay i didn't And I'll have to switch to my less good camera, unfortunately, since I gotta plug in my external C or DVD ROM drive. Which, I mean, I was thinking of getting a USB splitter that actually works, but since I'm gonna try and get a desktop computer, which will almost certainly have more PC ports and use that to stream, I don't know. And there's much point in getting a USB splitter at this point. Because the ones that don't have, like, a dedicated uh, power source are useless for anything but keyboards and mics, at least in my very limited experience. But... Oh. Yes, I figured it will just switch to whichever other thing you have open. I was 
researching measures of the afternoon. Isn't it good I didn't have a port window up? Let me change the title. DVD-ROM drives clicking. I was thinking about something. Thinking about opening when I push the button? Yes, whenever I switch my backup webcam, I always keep looking over at my regular one. That's why I'm looking over to the side, in case you guys were wondering. Mm. Brand new CD. I wonder if the manual tells us anything useful. Why are you making noises? Oh, TRACKS stands for Trace, Research, Analyze, Exterminate. Do it does, boss. I'm like, well, you play it, DVD ROM dive. You play it with a program. Yeah, yeah, but uh, which program do I play it with, boss? You got several. Maybe you should uninstall a couple. I didn't install half of them. They came with the computer. Thanks a lot, Hewlett Packard. Oh, okay, DLC Media Player. That one's on me. I think I used to play the DVD, uh, Night of the Werewolf, Choose Your Own Nightmare, which was kind of similar to Project Slasher, although a little more depth branching narrative. You guys can see the graphics, right? Haha, just kidding, there are none. Hold on a second, I should switch the stream information and create a new chapter real quick. Which will probably just say, I mean, it probably will just have the Terra Tracks listed for the FMV game, PC game version, but meh. I ain't particular. Oh, wow, Track of the Vampire is the only one listed. Good thing that's one I had. Okay, now where were we? Ah, oh, yes. We were hearing, hearing screams and such while looking at a traffic cone.
Everyone knows to dial 911 in case of emergency. Everyone knows that a 911 operator on the other end will dispatch police, fire, and medical personnel to rescue you. Few, however, know what happens to the strange calls, calls of a supernatural nature. are referred to a covert agency known as TRAX. TRAX is an acronym for Trace, Research, Analyze, and Exterminate. That's where you come in. You control a network of operatives who secretly investigate mysterious events of which the general public has no knowledge. You pursue a particularly inhuman type of villain. The undead, the alien, the ghoul. The type of villain the general public doesn't even believe exists. Here is how it works. I'm not sure. Listen carefully. It may, Emergency it may be calls like that. Fielded nationwide by 911 operators what to are do. referred to you. Deployment operations are handed down from Trax Command. You process and select the options. Trax. From this point on, you will deal with the Trax interface computer. I will turn you over I to see what they did there. Welcome to Trax Interface. First, an equipment checkout. Observe CD player currently playing disc. Consult LCD display. It should inform you that you are on track one. Good. Huh. Now, advance to track three. If you do not know how, pause deck and consult your manual. Advance to track three. I actually don't know how. <laughs> um. Oh. Like, I was thinking, oh, this this should be nice and easy. Here, let, let's just Google how to switch to a specific track on in VLC. Explorer, you know, that's not a bad idea, Abracadaggers. If it, because it's only showed one track. And here it's saying, the first search result is saying, go to audio, audio track, in track two. I suppose the other thing we could do is try and play it in Windows Media Player, which might be more to the point. I just had already had VLC set up in OBS from when I streamed, uh, Choose your own nightmare DVD. What happens if we go to the end of it? I'm getting a busy signal. If you have reached this track, you are in error. Please return Oops. to track one to begin the game. Yeah, that's my B. Well, yeah, we'll try opening this puppy in Windows Media Player. And if that doesn't work, or if uh, OBS doesn't like Windows Media Player, because OBS does not like a lot of things, then 
Uh, we'll go ahead and try and open it in Explorer. It's a, it's a good way of learning this together, because this way, when you guys play interactive audio CDs from the mid-90s on your external DVD-ROM drives, you'll know what to do. It's an ed educational stream right here. While that's playing, I'll just... create a capture source real quick. Can you guys hear this all right? I'm hearing the sounds. For some reason, Windows Media Player is not appearing in the box. Everyone knows to dial 911 in case of emergency. Everyone knows that a 911 operator on the other end will dispatch. I don't know that you can hear it. Medical personnel to rescue you. Well, that's the important thing. Let me dial that up. Calls. Calls of a supernatural nature. Well, let me accidentally mute it. There we go. These calls are referred to a covert agency known as TRAX. TRAX is an acronym for Trace, Research, Analyze, and Exterminate. That's where you come in. You oh, thanks. That's great. You control the who secretly investigate mysterious events of which the general public has no knowledge. You pursue a particularly inhuman type of villain. The undead, the alien, the ghoul. The type of villain the general public doesn't even believe exists. Here is how it works. Listen carefully. Emergency calls fielded nationwide by 911 operators are referred to you. Deployment operations are handed down from Trax Command. You process and select the options. From this point on, you will deal with the Trax interface computer. I will turn you over to it now. Welcome to Trax Interface. First, mm. an equipment checkout. Observe CD player currently playing disc. Google is not being instantly helpful. Insert LCD display. It should inform you. LCD, that you didn't are she try and blow up Wolverine or something? Good. Now, advance to track three. If you do not know how. Pause deck and consult your manual. Advance to track three. Is this a good time to mention I don't have a manual? This would be easy and intuitive. <laughs> this is one of those times Google is playing fast and loose with the terms. Like, audio track? You must mean song. Showrunner? You must mean executive producer. Cough syrup? You must mean scotch. <laughs> yeah, I did set up a challenge for myself. I, I thought it would be easy. <laughs> hmm. 
But all, all the Google search engine results are alike. And then they probably haven't, or if they have, it's so long ago it's buried down on page 13 of the search results. I don't know, they may be on something. Audio and language tracks? Yes, that's what I want. I want to play the CD in Arabic. Or, uh... Tibetan or Spanish? No, no. Oh, Windows Media Player, why must you torture me? All right, we'll try this in Explorer. Hey, eh, troubleshooting stream. Become tech savvy with Purblind Gamer. At exactly the same instant that Purblind Gamer becomes tech savvy. Stream length, five years. Oh, okay. There's a nice little list of all 53 tracks on the disc, so that should work. So basically, I should have listened to Africa Daggers in the first place. I'll remember this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the capture window for Windows Media Player isn't actually picking up the interface. It's just picking up approximately 200 iterations of my mouse cursor. I do not question the will of the computer. Okay, track three. Good. You have oh. successfully. Wait a second. I just realized I can actually. do this in VLC media instead and it'll look nicer for you guys. <laughs> the computer's getting smart with me. Scratch that. <laughs> the real horror part is the horror of trying to get this technology to work on this computer. to advance to track 5 will result in suspension of tracks control. The following phone call was referred to us seconds ago. Please analyze and activate. 911, what is your emergency? <laughs> Please, please, calm down and speak slowly and clearly. I am here to help. 
tracks. Use of word vampire indicates possible extraordinary circumstances. Please advise. We accept mission. I can make out what they're saying. Phone call terminated. Hmm. Track four. Digitally reanalyze phone call. He does. Track six. Dispatch operative to location. Well, I could see it going either way. 911, what is your emergency? Please, please, calm down and speak slowly and clearly. Mm. I am here to help. Tracks. Use of word vampire indicates possible extraordinary circumstances. Please advise. We accept mission. You have violated the blood oath. Give me the no, no, the blood is mine. Oh, oh, oh God, it is spilled all over. You have fighting over the blood. Phone call terminated. Track four. Digitally reanalyze phone call. Track six. Dispatch operative to location. I only options to dispatch. Track's officer is at apartment of Vivian Kloss. Prepare for broadcast. No, that, that was, we just, in, we just did analyze the phone call, and that was why it sounded more clear. But he said she lured him there and talked about violating the blood code, and then the blood spilt, but it didn't sound like it was either of theirs. It's more complicated than it first seems. One, two, three, go. Hold it, law enforcement. <laughs> Identify yourself. What the hell with you? You just threw a bottle at me. Hands up or I'll shoot now. I said freeze, mister. No, no, stop it. Oh my god. This boy's dumber than I thought. Jumped out the window. 12 stories. Ooh. All right, Trax, why don't you send out a corner? You know, I'll check that. Send a garbage collector with a hefty bag. <laughs> spatula. Down. What is this? Six hints of you are in this job. Plenty of glass. Nothing. The repeat tracks, I see nothing. What the hell happened to this guy? Track 7. Search street for body. Track 12. Search apartment. I mean... If he ain't below the window, there ain't gonna be a body. Should secure the perimeter, I think. Describe scene. Okay, Trax, this place is a mess. Mm, too bad, looks like a romantic night was in progress. Candles, music, and a couple of saps. I'm turning on the light. Wait a minute, we got a cold one on the couch there. It's like a woman, late 20s. Beautiful. Once was, anyway. I'm checking for pulse. Nah, she's dead as a doornail. Shining light in her eyes. Ah, no reaction. Check mouth for bangs. Well, this is the part of my job that I absolutely love. <laughs> Get, get off of me! Emergency. Uh, you, uh, I said stop or I'll shoot! Get, uh, 
Officer, are you conscious? Checking heart rate. Officer to Drax Command. I'm, I'm alive. I repeat, I'm alive. I don't know how, but looks like a little vamp flew the coop. Might have been out with tougher dames, but I can see why nobody takes her out on a second date. Track seven to investigate. Street. I don't think I like this guy. Track eight to continue to search apartment. Mm, let's press our luck in the apartment. Yeah, th this guy. <laughs> the, the relentless quips. <laughs> that would be a fun role to play. Now we're searching her purse and address book. Check today's entry. Man, this chick had a lot of dates. Every single night. Oh, hey. Welcome in, writers. Thanks so much for joining. How are, how are you guys doing? Everybody, please go st follow Slarty Bard fast. We're playing a bit of an unusual game today. It uh, has... No visuals, it's just an interactive audio CD. Oops. But hey, welcome in. Get your crayon. No, I just paused it. So I could... Oh. Usually the wrong. Uh, sure, shout out command. I can program, only not really. Yes, everybody, please go check out Slotty Bard fast. Whose name I love, because it's clearly a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. <laughs> it is a neat idea. I mean. It's, Yes, I'm being followed. I think it would be. Oh, thank you so much, Greg. Get your crayon. I really appreciate the follow. Welcome to the community. Playing Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, how's that going? Oh no, I I paused I paused the audio. Oh, you were joking. Right, right. I just paused it to welcome in the raid. <laughs> and I don't know why my raid alert didn't play. I'll have to work with that. Yeah, thanks so much for the raid and for and for the follow, get your crayon. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm per blind gamer. I'm a legally blind retro and variety streamer who seems to specialize in horror. And every Saturday we do short horror Saturday. I'm sometimes playing Unusual games, like audio CDs. It's going pretty well, thanks. Uh, Slarty Bard Fest, having a pretty good, pretty productive weekend. And how are you doing? And yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics. I don't. I'm not as familiar with Final Fantasy in general. How about your life yet? Sounds like a real-time strategy game set in the Final Fantasy universe. Verse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, a short, short RPG stream. That, that's fun. Sometimes it's nice to have shorter streams. Like it's one of the good things about short horror Saturdays. If if the game doesn't end up taking longer than anticipated. I don't end up actually go accidentally going for several hours. <laughs> but oh, it's an isometric game, uh, like Syndicate kind of. Gotcha. I know there are so many uh, uh, Final Fantasy games at this point. 
But yeah, I really do like the idea of the interactive audio CD and I think it would be possible to do something much bigger in scope now that you know you're not constrained by the amount of space on an audio CD. Like if you could do something like this now, through Steam or online, you could just expand into something truly epic. Oh, you're really tired tonight. <laughs> Well, yeah, I can understand that happened, and it is getting somewhat late. I... Oh, yeah, like an earlier version of the XCOM. I, like, I've never been big in strategy myself, but I had friends who played the XCOM ga home games, like, what is it, Enemy Unknown, and was it Terror from the Deep? Was that an XCOM? I think that was one. But yeah, those kind of things. Oh, that's cool. And I'm glad you're enjoying it. And yeah, I hope your weekend's going well in general. And these, these Terra Tracks games are interesting. There were, two of them were released as both audio CDs and FMV PC games. And then apparently two were only released as audio CDs, but those are hard to find. Oh, Terror from the Deep was the sequel to the first one, and then was Enemy Unknown the first one? <laughs> oh, nice to meet you too, get, get your crayon. Thanks, I hope you have a good night too. Yeah. And I, I know they had a couple of action XCOM games too, like... Uh, was it the Bureau Defense one recently? And XCOM Enforcer, take this to your leader a while back. Oh, thanks so much for the host, Get Your Crown. I really appreciate it. Here, I'll go ahead and get, get back to the game. Hmm. I haven't played XCOM. But hey, if you like Final Fantasy Tactics, maybe maybe you'd like XCOM too. I I don't know. <laughs> Being someone who never got into strategy and stuff, I just I either don't have the patience or I don't have the brain for it. One of the two. <laughs> and a little harder to walk up, look up a walkthrough for that than for an adventure game when you get stuck. <laughs> so. Uh, to fill you guys in, we're a law enforcement operative who deals with the supernatural. And we received a 911 call about vampires. We weren't sure what was going on. And, uh, yeah, you like those if you like tactical. <laughs> we arrived through a scene, a male vampire uh, jumped out of the window 12 stories down and then didn't die. And then there was a female vampire on the couch, and when we checked her for fangs, she attacked us, and we, I think, shot her six times, and then she fled, possibly wounding us. And now we're still searching the apartment, and I think he made reference to another corpse, and is looking at the, vampire, the female vampire's date book, because all vampires carry date books. Searching her purse and address book. Check today's entry. Hmm. Address book. Man, this chick had a lot of dates. Every single night. Oh man, what a trap. Oh, wait a minute, I get it. There's a paycheck here from the late date dating service. Looks like a scam for a bunch of losers who can't get a real date. <laughs> Oh yeah, the guy we're playing is a jerk. Continue to investigate apartment. Track 11. Access archives for late date commercial. Continue to investigate Wait, what is the option? Track 10. Continue hmm. to investigate apartment. Well, let's look Track up the commercial. 11. Access archives for late date commercial. Work 
the swing shift? Can't date until real late? Call late date and oh. find the right mate. No, no worries. Thank you so much for the lurk. And thank you for the raid, Slardy Bard Frost. I really appreciate it. My love life used to do the graveyard shift until I found out about late date. Are they getting in all the puns here? I thought it was too late for me until I called late date. Thanks, you too. Late date. Anytime. That's 1 800 L A T D A T E. Track 10. Continue investigating apartment. I'd say our options are somewhat limited here. But hey, even if we do get a little, uh, some uh, level of choices, we get to hear most of them on a single playthrough. <laughs> no, it didn't tell us, the commercial didn't tell us much, but it had a lot of death puns in it. Check out the dating service. See if we can find a hot date. Or a cold date, because they're all dead. What are the options? Track 13, too late date. Tracks, I'm out in front of late date. Small, nondescript place. Drive by a million of them every day. Kind of an ashtray. <laughs> Not much activity, a couple of cars. Rubes coming and going. Just getting out. <laughs> right, there's gotta be a game over track somewhere. Track 14, Scout Exterior. Track 19, immediately enter building and investigate. Did they say 14? Getting out. Track 14. I mean, after playing Project Slasher, where 50% of the choices were instant death, this is good, quite a change. More like one of the Choose Your Own Adventure books. in a roller coaster in a swanked out office. These girls are as pretty as stilettos and probably twice as deadly. Unbelievable. Oh my God. The one that's talking, Vivian. This is the fang job that jumped me. Use surveillance microphone. How do you know the name? The way we always oh, right. Do it. I just looked. I verified his story. He's a bachelor, lives alone, a doctor. He won't be missed for days. It all jived with the records. When did he slash you? I tore at his juggler, but it was dry. Then he starts screaming at me. And I says, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know he was one of us. And that's when he attacked you? He went straight for my throat. And you called 911 at that point? Yeah. What else was I going to do? If I hadn't, I'd be chilling in a dumpster right now. Those old work types are crude dudes. <laughs> Mercedes just pulled in. His lights lit me up like a neon sign. I don't think the bozo even saw me. I don't believe it. It's that sick dog from the apartment. Ooh. Track 15. Right. Continue surveillance. He's trying to be Track like an old school hard boiled detective. Let's watch and wait. See what the bozo of, from the old world wants with Vivian. <laughs> I 
Oh, nice. You're so stereo. Is deadly. What do you see? Into the front office. It sounds very much questioning or Chandlerian. The hard goodbye. The hard goodbye. My vote says we save the taxpayers a lot of money. <laughs> Track sixteen. Apprehend. Track seventeen. Enter late date. Hey, does apprehend mean? Apprehend or kill him. You never know in this film noir vampire world. Wait, shoot, what was the number again? 16. Apprehend. 16. I've always thought that the fusion of noir and horror could be great. I wanted to write stuff in that vein. We don't call for backup. <laughs> Now when there's a chance to save the taxpayers' money. But feel free to resist. This is outrageous. What is the meaning of this? I've done nothing. This is outrageous. My papers are all in order. Why don't you put your hands on the hood of your car? You are making a terrible mistake. Eat that, you son of a bird. not changed. I dislike the tawdry manner in which you operate in this country. What was she thinking, calling the police? Give me a break. I've only been undead a month. What the hell were you doing trying to rip a fellow vamp? I still want a refund and a fresh girl for next time. When we finish chowing, I mean eating, let's torch this place. This is a tracks guy. The cops will be all over us like a cheap suit. <laughs> Vital signs terminated. Track 46. Search Dr. Hemos's residence. Hmm. The Ballad of Black Tom. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> Track 46. Well, hopefully we can go back and re-examine some of these earlier ones. Also, how are we going to search this if we're dead? Just, just throwing that out there. I'm at the house. Looks like you left in a hurry. Holy, I don't believe it. There's a huge bat. It's just, it's flying into the house. Track 50. Wait for tactical backup and surround Dr. Emo's home. Track 51. Go in alone after Dr. Hemos. It was Dr. Hemos the... Empire we heard earlier? I don't... It's possible his name was mentioned. I feel like maybe if we'd gone to the hospital and tracked the doctor's bag. No, I, I may have missed something. Around Dr. Hemos' home, track 51. Go in alone after Dr. Hemo. Sounds like a recipe for a good game over uh, scene, but eh, let us go out tonight for pleasure. The night is still young. Officer, report. All right, I'm in Dr. Hemo's house again. I guess the maid hasn't stopped by yet. Hold it, I hear something. Going in to check. 
freeze! Oh, please. Either put that thing away or use it. Tracks, I've cornered Hemos in his den. He's packing some sort of satchel. I'm right here. You can ask me what I'm doing. You don't have to speak of me as if I'm an absent third party. Right, stay where you are. Come any closer and I'll... Relax, officer. I'm an ally. You're a vampire. True, but an intelligent vampire. I avoid taking human life. Besides, no. it only increases the competition by creating more vampires. What about the lady you attacked earlier this evening? That dear officer was no lady. She was a vampire like a demoness. She and the others were encroaching on my territory. You can see the damage they did to my home when they tried to eliminate me. So I eliminated them. What about Otis Lee Suggs? Alas, I had no idea my serum would have that effect on him. Ah, what's... I think we should go back and try and get to this place organically, because I don't know why it told us to drop, to jump ahead that far after our character died, other than... Maybe they didn't have room to make a game over scene? It sounds like this is an interesting wrapping up of the plot that we haven't actually gotten through yet. Let me see, what was... It was somewhere around 14. Right, I did turn this into a vampire. Give us a game over. Okay, I'm walking around the building. Got some flashy cars around here. Checking the window. Hmm. Three hotsy totsies with more curves than a roller coaster in a swanked out office. These girls are as pretty as stilettos and probably twice as deadly. Unbelievable. The one that's talking? It's Vivian. The fang job that jumped me. Use surveillance microphone. I did it the way we always do it over drinks. I verified his story. He's a bachelor, lives alone, a doctor. He won't be missed for days. It all jived with the records. When did he slash you? I tore at his juggler, but it was dry. Then he starts screaming at me, and I says, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know he was one of us. And that's when he attacked you? He went straight for my throat. And you called 911 at that point? Yeah. What else was I gonna do? If I hadn't, I'd be chilling in a dumpster right now. Those are right, not juggler, just juggler. <laughs> Mercedes just pulled in. His lights lit me up like a neon sign. I don't think the bozo even saw me. I wonder when this is set. I don't believe it. It's that sick dog from the apartment. Aside from 911 and the track tracks technology. Continue surveillance. Track 16. Apprehend. Call back up before entering. I'm calling back up. Tracks, I'm waiting for backup. I hate waiting for backup. There's some kind of nasty argument going on in there between the old teacher and the ladies. Check it out. Dare you fix me up with one of the undead? It is an outrage, I please, tell you, an outrage! Please, sir, why don't we take this conversation elsewhere? Do not try anything, how you say funny. I have taken precautions. I assure you, Vivian simply made a mistake when she slashed you. How could she have known that you were one of us? 
Well, as nearly as I can figure it out, tracks the uh, domestic disturbance was a case of mistaken identity. A couple of fang jobs trying to do the rip and run on each other. Hey, how you doing, uh, Lieutenant Frank? Yeah. What kind of a weird shot you got us on tonight? Remember to be diplomatic with local officers. Be diplomatic with local officers. You know, old world vampire. Running a late dating service for blood theft. Not another one. Remember to be diplomatic with local officers. Okay, fellas, let's check it out. But remember, we're doing this by the book. It's not giving me an option to be diplomatic. Welcome to late date officers. We love men in uniform here. Well, that's great, but this ain't no social visit, lady. Your boss back there? Sir. Please. Please. Tougher. Okay, folks. Listen up. I'm Lieutenant Frank. This officer's from Trax. We're to talk about some kind of a murder. Uh, Trax officer, why don't you take it from here? Well, he was the perp and she's the victim. Best I can figure it, they both made a little mistake. The two undeads tried to kill each other. Oh, brother. This is all very interesting, officer, but it seems to me that your murder case kind of falls down when both of the victims are so very much alive. And it appears... She's got a point. We'll see Ooh. about that downtown. Lieutenant, do you think our friend the chief of police will be very interested in this case? Frankly, lady, I don't see a case. All right, boys, let's go. Now, wait a second, Lieutenant. You let those two go, and hundreds of people are going to turn up bone dry. Listen, pal. If it wasn't for that fancy agency you belong to, I'd be hauling your ass down to jail for wasting the taxpayers' money. Sorry. Uh, sorry to bother you, ladies. No problem, uh, sir. Apparently, and if you ever want to come back for Please have some so knowledge of tracks, and I don't like uniform. us. <laughs> In our charter, we must respect local law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I am sorry. This case is closed. Alert. Alert. Crisis Ooh. at Metro County Hospital. Respond immediately. Ooh, Track hospital. 33. We could have gone there earlier. <laughs> okay. More organic way to bring us to a later point in the story as opposed to a game over. But yeah, like in many noir movies, nah. our character is at odds with the local police. And we say track 33. Bizarre thing, I made a joke about LPs in uh, somebody's stream the other day and they didn't know what I was talking about. Times they are changing. I say as I play an audio CD on an external USB DVD ROM drive. is trying to pound on a door. I'm in that. I hope Just that's the way. Down. Yeah, that would be the more logical. What in the hell are you talking about? Nice shooting, boy. Problem is, your bullets don't seem to be working. <laughs> Track 34. Attempt to capture. Track 35. Destroy. I'm not sure. Is there an uber vampire at the hospital? Problem is, your bullets don't... Track 34. Attempt to capture. I feel like... Capturing and destroying, neither one is a good option in this situation. Eh, well, maybe we can blow them up. Waste him! Just give your gun right in his eye socket! <laughs> Son of a bitch! Zap him with that 
window <laughs> well at least Sandifer is still alive tried to tear my lung out <coughs> heck knows why I'd want it good work boy track 36 intercept killer before he gets to Sylvester Peterson in heart ward track 38 deploy officer to dr. Hemos residence I thought it was taken off. I mean, yeah, these are different law enforcement officers, even though the computer said to go to... I go there to this, to, uh, disturbance of the hospital. It's, it is a little disjointed. What are the options? And what is it with vampires and self-defenestration? 36. Intercept killer before he gets to Sylvester Peterson in Who? Heart Ward. Where? Track oh, Heart Ward. Deploy officer to Dr. Hemos residence. Back to Dr. Hemos. So, I mean, once again, it's taken us past part of the story. I guess, but I mean, I feel like there are some adventure games like that where you just have to replay it and learn the optimal path to see everything. <laughs> Alright. That's true. If, you, know, you can't be harmed by following the 12 stories. Why not just hop on out? Let's try and save Sylvester and Heartward, whoever he is. Hey, I'm on the elevator. Heading to intensive care. I hope I'm not too late. <laughs> Such is up here. Boy, he hasn't gotten any prettier. He's attacking. Safety code whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yuck. Well, I finally carried out that death sentence on Suggs. <laughs> hey, tell the warden next time he executes somebody, he's got to finish the job. Huh? Only thing I want to know is what kept him alive. Good work. Hearts, perhaps? Track 38. Investigate Dr. Nemo's house. I'm almost tempted to try and like go through all the tracks of this and just so we can get fragments of the whole story. Then we'll follow this through to the end this time. Yeah. I think it's the old world vampire. Dr. Peter Chemos, this location. Nice home. Ranch style. Guys breaking in the long green. I'm at the front door, going in. Wait, the, the door's busted. Looks like somebody smashed it off its hinges, then stood it up to hide the fact they broke in. Probable cause. N not no much of a. Uh, way to hide it long term. <laughs> I'm entering the house. The door fell over. So much for the element of surprise. I'm inside. Bad happened here. It's hard to see. The only light is coming from, I guess, the kitchen area. It sounds like just the refrigerator has been left open. It's gloomy, but man, I can see that 
This place has been wrecked. Trashed. Define trashed. Stuff all over the place, uh, I mean, I've seen places like this before, but not like this before. I mean, whoever, I'm no shrink, but whoever did this was full of rage. Furniture is offended, there's been chairs thrown against the wall, and artwork's been slashed. I'm stepping all over glassware and... Yeah, I'm guessing he thought she was a human. Like, through the dating service. Like graffiti, but it... Graffiti. Some kind of mistake. Blood power. Dead blood. Blood rules. Spelled with an LZ. Analysis. Appears to correspond with other known 20th century vampire writings. Welcome to the 90s. <laughs> Going towards the back. I want to check out this blue glow. See what this is. Welcome to the 90s indeed. Caution. Alright, I'm in this. Room looks like a den. Again, the place is yeah. just wiped out. There's the books all what over the place. They've been slashed, and they don't look like they've been torn Vampires with scissors or her. knives. They've been tell ripped. And the all right, the blue glow's just a, a computer. It was left on, maybe whoever somebody was dictating. I don't know. The, the keyboard has just been left dangling. But man, this I can't explain it better than this. This was just an orgy of destruction. Track 39. Scan computer files. Track 40. Search doctor's office at Metro County Hospital. Now we'll start with the computer. An orgy of destruction. I can't find a body, but... And I hope this file was important enough because he probably died for it. Read file. We did come from the hospital. File 736. Subject yeah. blood preservation serum experiment on transplant donor Otis Lee Suggs. Serial killer recently executed by lethal injection. Which is the monster we killed at the hospital. The serum is derived from elements of my own condition. First injection seemed to work. The body and organ showed no deterioration after eight days, despite removal of several major. <laughs> oh. My God! Who the hell are you? You know me. You died. A demon woman. Red eyes. She's got claws. They have like claws and fangs. Get her out! No. Get get my gun! Holy! Get her! Go! Get her! That was a pretty good jump scare. And signs of deterioration Silver no special seem to have done the job. Is there any sign of rapid of the decay? Preliminary analysis. Subject is A. Mediterranean European vampire subspecies. Track <sighs> Investigate Dr. Lemos office, oh. Metro County Hospital. Which must be news in transplants. That's why he's trying to get that guy's heart. Yeah. The monster. It... Track 40. 40. Investigate Dr. Officer at Dr. Lemos' office at Metro County Hospital. Search and report. We're entering the office now. It's like entering a whole new world in here. It's, it's like stepping back into the 18th century. This room has its own <laughs> mood. <laughs> yeah, there's like a palpable sense of evil here. It's musty, there's dust everywhere, everything is all this heavy wood, the cabinets are wood. The hairs on the back of my neck are just standing up. I mean, I can feel the evil in this room and... It's coming from all these books he's got. Right, why are you trying to tap it on? Good point. Old world heavy books. What is this? Like Tome de Vampiri. The Age of Vampirism. Wodalark. Huh. The Necronomicon. Oh. 
Books and not Reader's Digest selections. <laughs> Looks like Hemo's had more than a professional interest in blood. With a name <laughs> like Hemo's, who's surprised? <laughs> right, name <Damn>. dropping. <laughs> All the files are coded. Download files. We'll attempt to decode. Thank goodness for our supercomputer. Files accepted. Attempting to decode. Estimated decoding time, 30 minutes. Officer is no longer needed at Dr. Emo's office. Hospital security, please report to blood bag. Track 41. Investigate blood bank. Track 42. Wait for analysis. I mean, we can come back and hear the analysis, I would assume. There's blood all over the place. Tracks, the blood bank has been looted. Repeat, looted. Who was the last person to have access to this room? Computer from well, Celery Man. I don't know that one. Hours ago. Then Dr. Hemos requested that Tracks, we go back. it appears Dr. Hemos has looted the blood bank. You have no proof alert, of that. Alert, alert. Fire detected in Dr. Hemos' office. Hear that, Trax? On my way. Shoot. I'm going to destroy the files. <laughs> Somebody's torched the doctor's office, Trax. His computer is nothing but a puddle of molten plastic now. Dr. Hemos has destroyed his computer files. Damn. Dr. Hemos reported fleeing north on Burgundy. Track 43. Pursue Dr. Hemos. Uh, I'm curious what would happen if we'd stayed in the office. Let's try track 42. It's a good number. This is uh, surprisingly fun. Decoded files indicate Dr. Hemos is a vampire type, standard Carpathian variety. He came to North America in 1837 and has been posing as a doctor ever since. He has specialized in hematology in order to have access to blood without direct contact with humans. Skimming it off the top, huh? First time I ever heard of embezzling at the blood bank. <laughs> the cult grew in number, some seeking out living victims. Dr. Hemos, fearing they would rouse authorities, attempted to destroy them before he was exposed as well. Attention all units, Dr. Hemos's Mercedes reported northbound of hospital. I agree, Abracadagras, that's... Track 44, pursue vehicle. Good voice acting, but... <sighs> They'd have spent more time on the writing and the continuity. I don't know how much they had to change or shorten due to constraints of the CD. Wait, did she say 44? Sue Vehicle. That's Dr. Hill. Track 44. Yeah. Pursue. I'm pursuing suspect. Blocking me, I've got to try and get around him. I can't. No. Oh! Officer deceased. Ooh. This frequency is no longer. We died operation. fast. Performance rating pathetic. Return to track five. Wait, what did she say? Again. Performance rating pathetic. <laughs> Pathetic. Return to track five and begin again. Oh, I just got insulted. Well, I guess that's a game over screen. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> yeah, people rude. But yeah, I wonder about the budget. Because... <laughs> yeah. Well, rather than restarting... For the sake of the stream, let's pretend we pursued uh, Hemos instead after he torched his office. It's like a uh, time traveler, time cubes to go back in time and redo. Mercedes North on Burgundy, driving like a maniac. <laughs> Almost hit that bus. He's not responding to my lights or sirens. Remain calm. 
Maintain pursuit. He ran up on the sidewalk. People are diving for cover. Nobody hurt. He's trying to shake me. Do not lose vehicle. Narrow alley. Man, look at the sparks fly from the side of his car. Tracks, I think I know where this alley comes out. I can circle around to head him off. Track 44. Maintain pursuit. Track 45. Intercept. Well, 44 ends in death, so... Let's check out the corpse. If it is a corpse. We got priority clearance for Hela Pat 2. There's gonna be a full security squad waiting for us. Great. Hey, that crispy critter in the back must be pretty hot stuff, huh? Old world vampire. Hard to kill. They don't want to take chances. Pilot, put us down. Uh. What? I said put us down. Hey, that thing's still alive. Don't let it get out. The body bag is tearing like a cocoon. He's coming out. Look at him. Man bad and lost his brain. Everybody's full of quips. <laughs> Exterminate man bad. Ma man bad. Subdue man bad. If we can subdue it. Like this is a villain from Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, I swear that's a DC character. Shooting garlic spray. I didn't think that would work. Okay. Kirk Langstrom. Officer life functions terminated. Performance rating. Pathetic. Return to track five and begin again. Yeah, we should have just killed him. I think it was this track. Pilot, drop down! Out of the line of fire! Hey, watch out! Trees can't follow him. I bet he's heading home. Track 50. Wait for tactical backup and surround Dr. Emo's home. Hmm. Track 51. Go in alone after Dr. Emo's. Maybe it's time to be sensible. Dr. Hemos! Dr. Hemos, we have your house surrounded. Repeat, we have your house surrounded. Do not attempt to escape. Come out with your hands up. No response. I don't think he's coming out. Try again. Dr. Hemos, come out and surrender now. If you do not, we are coming in. He's ignoring us. Advance with tactical squad. We don't know he's there, Stay do we? Stay back! Come out with your hands up! Stay back! I warn you! Okay, take him! Rex, Dr. Hemos just blew up his own house. 
Nothing but a shattered foundation and burning rubble. Yeah, he is a bad negotiator. Results in mission failure. Return to track five and begin again. Failure to apprehend results in mission failure? <laughs> oh, so if we allow him to die, we... What about all this time they were, they were like, one of the options was, okay, terminate him, save the taxpayers some money. Give him the big goodbye and floating down the river sticks with a pair of cement shoes. Okay, but now if he died, we're just, we're just bad officers. Oh, oh. well then. All right, let's do, what was the other option? I feel like we're close to the end. I'm trying to remember. We go back one or two tracks. Rather than restarting the whole thing. That's a good sound effects. He go among the houses and trees, can't follow him. I bet he's heading home. Track 50. Wait for tactical backup and surround Dr. Emo's home. Track 51. Go in alone after Dr. Emo's. Let's go in alone. You know, I've never heard many of the Doctor Who audio dramas. All right, I'm in Doctor Hemo's house again. Is that that Pescaton one? Were those really good? Going in to check. Freeze! Oh, please, either put that thing away or use it. Tracks, I've cornered Hemos in his den. He's packing some sort of satchel. I'm right here. You can ask me what satchel you Satchel charge. You don't have to speak of me as if I'm an absent third party. If I stay where you are, come any closer and I'll... Relax, officer. I'm an ally. You're a vampire. Truth, but an intelligent vampire. I avoid taking human life. Ooh, that many, wow. The competition Been going on a while. <laughs> What about the lady you attacked earlier this evening? That dear officer was no lady. She was a vampire like a demoness. She and the others were encroaching on my territory. You can see the damage they did to my home when they tried to eliminate me. So I eliminated them. And what about Otis Lee Suggs? Alas, I had no idea my serum would have that effect on him. Ah, what's the saying? The cavalry arrives. All right, put down the satchel. Just some cash, officer. A new passport, a fresh change of socks, some cold blood. I can't start a new life, or should I say, a new unlife, with nothing. Remember, some of us are on your side. Get away from that window. He's changing into a man bat. Damn, he just smashed through the window. He's on our side. I've got him in my sights. I'm gonna take the shot. Hold your fire. Hold my hmm. fire. Dr. Hemos has proved an effective ally. Trax authorizes his survival for hmm. now. Go to track 53. I guess so. I mean, because he's against taking human life. But, you know, disturbing. The human world with his vampirism. Track 53. That's the final track. I think it probably is the end. Your first mission with tracks is over. If you wish to experience a new tracks adventure, please insert disc number two. Track of the werewolf. Huh. I'm waiting. <laughs> if you do not have disc number two, track of the werewolf, go purchase it. Wait, what? If you do not have disc yeah. number two, 
track of the werewolf. Yeah, a bit more of it than did. Wait, I mean, I guess it did. You know, authorizing his survival for now as he flew away did pretty much wrap up the story. So I wonder if this was actually sold as a two-pack with Track of the Werewolf, which I have remember seeing in a weird, almost cardboard long box back in KB Toys, or if that was just their way of trying to get you to buy the second one. Hmm. Yeah, I wish he had a clothing monologue. I, even though it was a couple different guys. <laughs> There's a guy at the end there wasn't the same uh, hard boiled noir detective we had at the start. That certainly was. I mean, I think it was fun, and it's true it was probably low budget because it was all audio, but at the same time, they had. I think they spend a fair amount on it just because of the quality of the sound effects and the, and the sound editing and mixing and I don't know, the music could have been stock and the fact that you know, obviously the voice actors were being campy but they were all they all did a good job it was like, seemed like they were all professionals and also the company that made this was Wizards of the Coast which, you know they got a fair amount of money to throw around. <laughs> now it's a shame these things didn't catch on and we didn't get a lot more of them because I always loved radio drama, which, you know, hasn't been the same since the 50s, but, or as big, at least in America, I should say. It's getting more with podcasts. And I've always been interested in writing radio dramas. But... It's such a cool idea. And I know they've experimented with, you know, adapting the choose your own adventure format to other media in different ways. This, this, oh, this, this is from like the mid nineties. I would, I would just say, you know, the golden age of radio drama, like mid thirties through mid fifties kind of is when we got a lot of the really good stuff. But this... Uh, if it had caught on and... Oh right, I was saying they've tried to adapt the Choose Your Adventure thing to computer games and to DVDs, like... The, the Choose Your Own Nightmare series, somewhere computer, somewhere, were just DVD, and... Beyond the Wall of Stars, which I've heard of was the most direct attempt, and... Oh, oh, WOTC, Wizards of the Coast, yeah! That's... I know, because it's... I don't know if Magic was not getting big until the late 90s. I, I never followed Magic in a big way, but... It was similar. I mean, it was the same decade, and... I actually don't know the exact year of this. I say mid-90s, but I remember seeing Track of the Werewolf in... Toy Story, in the Toy Story, in like, I would say 98, which probably fits, and they're probably seeing, you know, the sort of mini FMV boom with the release of the CD-ROM, and, oh, like 95, 96 magic really took off. I mean, they may have seen that, like, following Night Trap and the ports of old Laserdisc games, there was a, and I guess after the Seventh Guest, there was a market for FMV-style games on PC, and so they released the FMV versions primarily, and then realized they could do the audio versions, you know, reach a broader audience, and the budget would be way lower. I mean, for all I know, they reused a lot of the audio from the, like, PC game versions in the audio game versions. Just such an interesting thing, and I can imagine, like now with the internet, doing an interactive audio drama with a much bigger scope. I mean, like, almost like Bandersnatch in scope. 
I just love my brain because I still haven't played Bandersnatch, but the guy who wrote, who made Project Slasher, which we played earlier tonight, mentioned in a retrospective, like, you know, more than 10 years before Bandersnatch, I was attempting to do this interactive movie. Oh yeah, the PC game of Trash of the Vampire was like, and Trash of the Werewolf were full motion video games, like with, you know, live videos of live actors. I, I believe I watched, yeah, because I watched part of a playthrough of Trash of the Vampire, the, the PC version on YouTube. So I wonder which came first. And it's also weird that they made only two of the FMV games, but four of the audio games. I mean, maybe it was just that they were so much cheaper. <laughs> and maybe the second two weren't so good, and that was why they never released them. As, you know, like they had the playable online versions of Werewolf and Vampire audio games for a while. Uh, I mean, I definitely liked it. I think the continuity errors and jumping ahead in the story were the things that frustrated me. Like, we don't know some games do that. Like, it came from the desert. You know, if you screw up and whatever, events keep going on. But with something like this, especially kind of limited in scope, I wish they had just told you to restart at certain points more rather than jump into a further part in the story. But yeah, they, they really went hard and oddity, and it would be cool to hear the story behind them. Like, maybe I could write a letter to Wizards of the Coast and be like, hey, I'm an amateur Twitch streamer. Could I do, like, an audio with somebody who did these projects 20 years ago? And they'll be like, no, piss off. Or they'll be like, oh yeah, sure, that was a... Old uh, Humberto, who headed those projects, uh, he works one floor down. I'm sure he'd be glad to do a tell hall because, frankly, nobody's written them to, uh, about, uh, about these things to us in, uh, well, since they were released. <laughs> hmm. But that has kind of got me wondering if I could write something that's like this, but a bigger scope, and could be coded to play through the internet. Like, you know, you could almost plan it out in Twine and then write the script and then... I mean, it couldn't be that hard to, you know, have a list of a thousand tracks and just tell players, you know, which one to jump to. I mean, instead of using my CD player, that's basically I was just scrolling through the Explorer window and double-clicking on the track number they said. It would be a big project, but I think it could be done, and if it told a really good story, I don't know, it would probably attract some attention. Especially among the visually impaired community, but... I'd also like to see them try and do serious horror in this style. Like, this was fun, and I did love some of the comedy, but... Doing serious horror... It's such a... Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Africa Daggers. Like, you know, some programmer or web developer could figure out a way to do that this online on a bigger scale. But the writing, which I could probably try writing something like that myself, but there are probably better ways to spend my time. And yeah, the recording, like finding good voice actors. And just the, like, to make the audio sound that good, would you need an audio engineer and good editors and probably to record sound effects, ideally original music. All of which drives the budget up, not nearly as much as video, but could be done. And I think that audio only is, you know, a medium that's really rich for doing serious horror and... I haven't listened to a lot of modern stuff, but they didn't really push trying to legitimately scare you in, you know, back when the radio dramas were really popular, or even with, I think, with some of the revised revival ones, like 
tells what the tales well calculated to keep you in suspense. Ah, but there's so much more I should listen to from the, you know, the 70s era and then the modern, the podcast era. Ah, audio drama is amazing. And there have been a couple of scary ones there. Yeah, that was Track of the Vampire. And I'd be curious to play more, but um, I was lucky to find this for 10 bucks. Like, Track of the Werewolf, the audio version, usually goes a bit more. I don't know, I mean, that's a, that's a fair point, Abracadabra said. I think Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark are, is one of the scariest series of children's books ever written, but I think the pictures in the original versions had a huge part in that, and like I know when they re-released them with, you know, very well done but significantly tamer illustrations, like it mollified the parents who'd been challenging the book for 20 plus years, but a lot of the fans are like, these aren't as haunting and like deeply disturbing as the old illustrations like I read I, I read one of those when I was in third grade and it really creeped me out but yeah the illustrations were nightmare fuel like, the text was enough to scare me for a couple of stories when I was in third grade but the illustrations are like you know at any age they're so so detailed and warped, they just get under your skin. It would be hard to translate to an audiobook. Oh, I would enjoy doing an audiobook of something like that. And I think it's possible for good horror to be scary in audiobooks, but you know, something with full cast and sound effects. Didn't really creep people out that way. Uh, I would like to play more of these, but I don't know. It's more like I have to wait and see if I find a cheap copy of Track of the Werewolf or of the FMB computer game versions or Track of the Mummy and Track of the Creature, which are the later ones. As an amateur collector, I like to think I'll get them all eventually in very nice condition, but there are practical considerations. Rent, for instance, food for another. Ever tried to eat an interactive audio CD? CD? Tastes like, tastes a lot like a normal audio CD. <laughs> I would too, and I, I, hope, I hope we get to play that at some point. Good. You know, I like FMV games, and there have been some good... Like, I've played some FMV rail shooters, but I know there have been some FMV horror games. I mean, heck, Night Trap, which they recently re-released in Big Box and on Steam a couple of years ago. <laughs> and... And various others. <laughs> but yeah, it would be really fun to play the FMV version of Track of the Vampire and see how it compared to the audio CD. Ideally, I would have done a double feature of those. Huh, no kidding, Night Trap is on Switch. After all the song and dance Nintendo did in the 90s about how this is evil and bad and this game practically beats children's heads out against the curb and we will never have anything to do with such humanity-destroying monstrosity. Oh wait, is there money in this? Keep it classy, Nintendo. Yeah. I know, it's old news. Yeah. Eternal Darkness kind of uh, showed us who they were. But I will never not give them a, you know, a hard time. Because, you know, you can be moralistic, but don't be pretentious about it. Especially not if you're not going to stick to your principles. Oh uh, well. Silly old Nintendo. I'm probably not going to get a Nintendo sponsorship now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I should probably wrap up and we'll raid somebody. But, uh... Yeah, there will be, there will be more interesting horror and... FMV, like Project Slasher, and, uh... Other things in the future. <laughs> You know, try and dig up some of the other interactive movies that were only released on DVD. Um, uh, I usually stream Sunday evenings, Wednesday evenings, and Saturday late afternoons for Short Horror Saturday. And I've just finished a couple games, like since we finished Ecstatica on Wednesday. Now tomorrow, I may go ahead and start the Hardy Boys game, or possibly something else. And Wednesday, I might play the remake of Combat, which I really want to, but I've got to make sure this Windows 95 virtual machine works all right. And then for Short Horror Saturday next week, I don't know. I've got I've got several random freeware games. Well, I'll decide what to do. And I know I said this for a couple weeks, but at some point I'll do the makeup stream, uh, bonus stream, where I do probably the song of Roland in Windows 3.1. Weird, sort of CD-ROM, vaguely interactive multimedia novel based on a medieval French poem. Because why not? Yeah, so I always have lots of games I intend to play. Lots of fun things coming up. Oh no, not Child Roland, though that, that is awesome. I love Robert Browning's Child Roland to the Dark Tower came. But this is uh, Paladine Roland, or from the, the poem The Song of Roland. He was a knight um, in Charlemagne's service who um, along with some others, fought a huge force and ended up perishing. It's a pretty, pretty interesting poem. Uh, there are a couple of translations. I remember I read one of the less common ones, so the names are different. But if you, if you like medieval epic poetry, the Song of Roland is a good one. Child Roland, that's such an interesting story. <laughs> But I'll... What was I going to say? I can't remember. Just, uh... Yeah, various things coming up. But it's also... So many things I want to play require some work to get them set up. Like... Eventually... <laughs> uh, I mean, it's easy. We don't read much French medieval poetry in school. <laughs> There, like, I do want to play the couple of the Carol Reed games I have, but they're not easy to get working on my computer, especially not in windowed mode. It makes it easier for me to see and chat. And at some, I mean, at some point, I need to set up a PlayStation emulator on my computer so I can play Resident Evil and Metal Gear Solid and other PlayStation games, but mostly those two. <laughs> Yeah. So don't worry, I'm not going to run out of games anytime soon. I'm sure I'll always find more, especially weird ones. I found more weird ones tonight. Why do I always find the weird ones? Maybe they're obscure for a reason. <laughs> but let's go ahead and find somebody to raid. Man, that game really did have some funny parts. And hey, we didn't have any technical issues or the uh, chat or edge-based things crashing. Maybe it's because I rolled back several Windows updates. That usually fixes just about anything. Take a hint, Microsoft. Like, seriously. Still online. Oh, Fornado's done. Uh -huh. 
It's Mike. Oh, Mike's doing coding. We raided him recently. Um. I don't know he's worried. I, I probably don't follow enough people and then end up raiding the same people quite a bit. Uh, oh, I haven't raided Hessian in a while. He's doing a oh, Counter Strike. Is that a Half Life era game? See, maybe we should. Oh, Command is doing. Looks like she's celebrating 400 followers. Maybe we should raid her. She's playing King's Quest 7. What's that? Air today, gone tomorrow. Absence makes the heart go fonder. Uh, King's Quest takes the air. King's Quest up in the air. H-E-I-R, of course. Eh. But, uh... I should probably keep a list of who I've raided and when, so I don't raid the same people too much. I should probably more, more raid more people I don't know, but I'm always awkward when I do that. Unless I know somebody in chat. Like, if somebody in chat recommends them. Wait, why is this? Okay, that's working. Yep. Thank you guys again for coming out for this weird raid, er, sad horror uh, double feature of Project Slasher and the Terror Tracks audio CD. Thank you if you've been chatting or lurking, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the raid too. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitch and also on Twitter and MySpace if you haven't. I post stream updates and random stuff. And, yeah, just thanks for coming by. I'm glad I finally got to experience these two things I've wanted to for a long time. And really did enjoy them. So I'll see you guys here tomorrow. And hope everybody has a good weekend. Oh, thanks. Oh, my pleasure. And hope everybody has a good night and... Please say hi to Cobra Commander. And, uh, try not to have nightmares about vampires chewing your eyeballs out. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's probably good I didn't buy this when I was eight years old. Sheesh. <laughs>